Today, we're going to take care of the rock and roll this thing has going around corners. Welcome to VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. I'm Brian. This is Scott. We're here to work on the uh, Mini TL or Project TSX. Now, uh, we are going to do a sway bar. Last episode, we did uh, brakes and suspension. And this time around, we're going to do rear sway bar because we noticed that when Aaron's Civic, F, um, 2007 Civic, had his rear sway bar in, the car handled much, much better. So nice. uh, we want to make sure that we take full advantage of our connections. Uh, so I called Progress, and they were nice enough to send me their sway bar. Now we have Teen suspension on it. Teen makes suspension, but they don't make sway bars. Progress, on the other hand, makes sway bars, although they don't make suspension for this car. So Peace we're mixing and matching. Here is our new Progress sway bar. And yep, hardware. Awesome. Cool. Basically just new bushings to hold the, the bigger millimeter bar. Yep, the bigger bar in place. And I assume then you got two choices. Yep, and this is tunable with uh, two different choices so you can shorten the bar and effectively stiffen it. So uh, we're gonna install this. Now, uh, last time I did a progress sway bar, it was on a Type R and I did not use the lubricant on the bushings and it made all sorts of noise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> squeak, squeak, squeak. So uh, this time I'm gonna make sure I do that so that it's quiet. I did eventually take it off and reinstall it with the, with the lubricant and it totally quieted it down. All right, let's get this thing on there. Let's get it on. If you break those loose, yeah. I got this guy. So you'll have to use your extensions. Can we get it out of here without taking the exhaust loose? It just went, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very good. We took it over that way, got it below, and then back. You got I don't want you twerking with. All right, so next thing you do is we're going to lube the bushings. The bushings actually have uh, serrations in here that will help hold on to the uh, lubrication. So I am going to not put it on sparingly. The stock sway bar is 15 millimeters and the new one is 22 and a half. Had toaster strudels. <laughs> yeah, really. Mm. Next, what we need to do is replace these horrible tires, which have down basically down the cords. They were just on here temporarily, uh, and we've got some new use tires to throw in their place. Mm -hmm. These are the Falcons we used at the uh, shootout, Falcon tire shootout. They still have lots of tread life left on them. So we're gonna- They look like championship tires. They look like those are off the championship vehicle. So we are gonna put those on here and I'll probably rotate them to the front because I think I'd rather have the champ tires up front <laughs> and the second place tires in the back. That way they'll finish the way they finished. Unless I go in backwards. <laughs> Sway bar is a kind of a balance between certain things. For instance, when you have no sway bars and fairly soft suspension. The car leans so far that the outside tires are no longer flat on the ground. Yeah, they're they raw, they're they're on the outer edge. With a front sway bar, it flattens out the car a little bit. Plus, it also tends to push when you go into a corner too fast, which makes you automatically let off the gas, in which case you gain front traction again. So it makes it safe for somebody driving on the street. For a front wheel drive car to be fast on the track, you actually want the back end to come loose before the front end comes loose, okay? Which of course is totally unsafe on the street. Yeah. Because here you are on a freeway entrance ramp and you're hooking around the thing and all of a sudden somebody stops in front of you, you, you lift, lift and touch the brakes and boom, you're, you're backwards. Yeah, yeah exactly. 
<laughs> and, the, and the solution is steer into it and gas it. Gas it. And that's not what you want to do. Steering into it and gassing Especially it. Especially if you don't have Somebody stopped in front of you. If you only have 10 feet, yeah, exactly. it's kind of hard. <laughs> so, yeah, so for now, we'll put the rear sway bar on. We'll figure out how it handles. If we need a little bit more handling at the track, we can disconnect the front sway bar, sway bar or we can stiffen the rear sway bar or we can stiffen all the springs at some point. But I mean, for at the track tuning, stiffening the rear or taking out the front is gonna be the solution. Since we're trying to change the handling on the car, obviously testing is a good idea. So we put the stock sway bar back on the car and we came down to this parking lot in order to do a test. We set up some cones. After we're done testing like this, we're gonna go back and we're gonna put the new progress sway bar on and come back and see what it's like. Then we'll get the footage and we'll compare to see what it looks like. Okay, the testing is done, and now let's check out the footage. I have to tell you, driving the car with the new sway bar on, the car felt much flatter. As a matter of fact, I can actually feel the back end begin to break loose a little bit if I drove aggressively through the cones. And that's what I'm used to uh, front wheel drive car driving like on the track. So all in all, I think the rear sway bar is a really, really good upgrade. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for joining us on another episode of VTech Academy. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we've got more modifications coming for this car. So please think about liking and subscribing to our video channel. We're actually trying to make a push to get 100,000 subscribers. We're actually edging up on 80,000 right now. So any help we can get is greatly appreciated. You can also visit our store at vtech.academy and uh, pick up merchandise like this super cool shirt. Anyway, guys, thanks for clicking on us and we'll see you next time.